Hello all my beautiful little unicorns and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time that you're on my channel, my name is Vanessa Samina, also known as the Unicorn Mom and your big sis here on the internet. And today I'm going to be guiding you through your aura color predictions. So how these life predictions work is very simple. All you need to do is scroll down into the description box or to the top of the comment section. Click your aura colors timestamp and you'll be fast forwarded to the relevant part of this video. And and don't panic if you don't know your aura color. This video is actually one of a two-part upload because simultaneously to publishing this prediction, I have also uploaded a video in which I explain to you what aura colors are, how you can figure out what your aura color is, and also what that says about you, your personality, and your characteristics. If you'd like to learn more details about your aura color, make sure that you check out that video. It's linked below as well. So Circling back to you maybe being unaware of your aura color, I will simply copy the aura color quiz that I developed right here into this video as well, so you can take your aura color test right here. And then once you've uncovered your aura color, then feel free to click the timestamp and you'll be fast forwarded straight into your aura colors predictions. So please be aware that if you would like the detailed explanation of the meaning of your aura color, that can be found in the aura color explanation video which is linked in the description box. All right, you guys, have fun discovering your aura color, and I'll be right back with you within your aura color life predictions. So let's get into your aura color quiz. All right, welcome to your aura color quiz. So we'll get straight into it with question one. What do you enjoy doing most in your free time? A, meditating, reflecting, or practicing mindfulness? B, exploring the outdoors, hiking, or gardening. C, socializing with friends and attending gatherings. D, engaging in creative activities like painting, writing, or crafting. E, learning new things, reading, or attending workshops. So as promised, I'll give you a little moment after each question to meditate on your answer. Feel free to pause the video whenever needed. And in just a moment's time, we will carry on to question two. Question two, how do you typically handle challenging situations? A, trusting your intuition and inner guidance. B, seeking solace in nature or peaceful environments c analyzing and researching for the best approach d tapping into your creativity and imagination for solutions e seeking advice and support from friends and loved ones question three if your friends had to describe you in one word, what would it be? A. Intellectual B. Earthy C. Social D. Creative E. Spiritual Question 4 which color brings you the most comfort and peace? A. Violet or indigo? B. White or silver? C. Pink or light blue? D. Orange or yellow? E. Green or brown? Question 5. Where would you prefer to spend a perfect vacation? A. A serene and spiritual retreat. B. A cozy cabin in the woods or a natural sanctuary. C. A lively city with lots of entertainment and social options. D. An artistic or cultural destination with museums and galleries. E a place of historical or intellectual significance.
Question 6. What's your go-to way to de-stress? A. Diving into a good book or exploring new information. B. Taking a long walk in a natural setting. C. Chatting with friends or spending time with loved ones. D. Diving into a creative project or hobby. E. Deep breathing, meditation, or yoga. Question 7. Your perfect evening involves A. A spiritual or self-reflection practice B. Watching the sunset in a serene and natural setting C. An evening of laughter and conversation with friends D. Delving into a thought-provoking discussion or reading E. Attending an art exhibition or creating something artistic Question 8. What's your favorite way to connect with others? A. Deep and meaningful conversations. B. Through shared experiences in nature. C. Attending social events and gatherings. D. Collaborating on creative projects. E. Engaging in intellectual discussions or study groups. Welcome back, my beautiful souls, and congratulations. You have just successfully taken your Aura Color Quiz. So now we're going to figure out how you scored. I am once again going to visually step away and show you all of the corresponding points to each answer on the screen. So you can add up your points in order to discover which Aura Color that this results to. All right, so for question one, these are the corresponding points to each one of the answers. If you can, note down your points somewhere, but I'm sure you can also just tally up your points in your head. It's very simple math. So moving on to question two, these are the corresponding points to each one of the answers. Question three, these are the answers and the corresponding points. Same thing for question four, here are your answers and the points for you to add to your score. Here we go with question five, these are the corresponding points. And we'll Question six, this is how you scored on your go-to way to de-stress. Make sure you're adding up those points. Question seven, your perfect evening. Feel free to let me know in the comment section what your perfect evening involves. And lastly, question eight, your favorite way to connect with others. These are the corresponding points to all of your answers. All right, you guys, so by adding up all of the corresponding points to your answers, at this point, you will have landed on a number between eight and 40. So I will now put up the scoreboard as well as which aura color that your score corresponds to, and I'll be right back with you. If you scored eight to 10 points, your aura color is white and silver. 11 to 17 points, your aura color is orange, yellow, and red. Having scored 18 to 24 points means that your aura color is pink and light blue. 25 to 31 points correspond to an aura color that is green and brown. And 32 to 40 points correspond to an aura color that is violet and indigo. Hello, all of my white and silver aura colors. Welcome to your prediction, which is based on the color of your aura. If you've got a white and silver aura, then you have a highly intellectual and analytical aura. You're constantly seeking knowledge, information, and you are the type of aura color that is going to continue to grow, evolve, and expand for life. So let's see what else is coming towards your aura color and what 
that your guides want you to pay close attention to. So let's get straight into it. I'm starting off with this beautiful animal oracle deck in order to help give us all of the guidance that we need for your aura color. So first up, we've got the whale spirit. If you've always been drawn to whales, like you've watched whale documentaries and love them, you are just the type of person that feels like these mysterious gentle giants are from another dimension i want you to know that this may actually be your spirit animal at the time of you being in your white and silver aura because they inspire you and they also just show you that intelligence exists in many different forms not just within the human form that we're aware of and the whale spirit actually brings you the message to sometimes just trust in the great mysteries of life and of this existence in the earthly realm as already mentioned having an aura color that is white and silver makes you someone who is highly analytical you like facts you like science you like everything that is actually tried and proven so it is sometimes important for you to let loose a little bit and remind yourself that intuition and not always knowing everything or being prepared for everything is fine and normal and we all go through that and it's nothing to panic about next up we've got the vulture spirit so the vulture spirit shows us here that at times when things go south or when you're kind of struggling in areas of life, you feel like you might as well just throw in the towel. Okay, so let me give you an example. You wake up in the morning, you're getting ready for work, and just the morning is not going the way you would like it to go. You spilled your coffee all over your shirt. Overall, you're sitting in traffic, you're late for work, you're stressing out, you haven't gotten certain payments done that you wanted to do, and just overall feeling like your day is already starting out in a very challenging way, and then sometimes you feel as though that makes the whole day a challenging day. But the vulture spirit is trying to remind you that nothing is wasted, and sometimes these experiences aren't here to trigger you or to annoy you, but actually to show you that just because your day maybe started off on the wrong foot, so to say, or something happened that you didn't expect and is seem seemingly a setback, it doesn't always mean that it actually is. Just think about it. If you've driven by an accident one of these mornings and you were in traffic because of it, that may have been because your guardian angels actually saved you from potentially being part of that accident by making sure you were late, you were meant to spill the coffee on your shirt, you were meant to have to clean up before you left the house or run back in to get a document or your laptop and charger that you forgot in order to protect you from running into a situation that would have been traumatic, painful, and potentially life-threatening and dangerous, all right? So sometimes what seems like a setback is actually divine intervention and protection. Next up here within the wolf spirit, we have got this energy of turning knowledge into wisdom. So you are the kind of person that loves to receive knowledge, you're constantly seeking knowledge, you are a great reader and listener. So of course, if you like to read, it's self-explanatory. If you're not a huge reader, then just listening to podcasts is like your thing. You love listening into different kind of shows that allow you to grow and expand your horizon. And now it's for you to turn all of that knowledge into wisdom by also applying it. I see that when it comes to application, you can sometimes struggle to turn theory into something that you're actually doing and practicing. Like in theory, you know a lot of things that others don't know, that other people have no clue exist, but now it's also time for you to practice all these theories and use them to your advantage. So a little bit of shyness when it comes to the practicing. That is one thing that you are able to overcome as long as you remind yourself here that it's also okay to be new at things and to not be good at things and to just discover new strengths even as an adult, even when you're not a kid anymore, even though in this society it can be difficult to really feel comfortable doing that. Next up, we've got the Queen of Wands. Now, she is confident, she knows what she wants, 
The Queen of Wands is obviously not playing around. And that's the type of energy that we've got coming straight from you, my beautiful white and silver auras. You are the type of person that others feel intimidated by. Your presence is magnetic. It's very deep ooh, and it has a very kind of passionate vibe to it. So when you feel a way about a thing, you will make it known. You're not the type of person to hold back just because you are worried other people's feelings are going to be hurt. The truth is what's most important and your top priority. So next up, we pulled the Page of Wands together. Now the Page of Wands shows us here that when you're feeling like you don't know what next step to take, the best thing is to just do the boldest move because again, you can be a little shy when it comes to taking action towards your dreams and your goals. You're not shy in expressing how you feel if you already feel comfortable in a field like at work. For example, you are not uncomfortable to just say what you know or say how you understand that a process needs to be done you're also a really good teacher being an aura color white and silver but when it comes to things that are completely new you can sometimes hold back to the degree that it's hard for you to actually like get embedded in it like if you're new to painting for example you want to create something nice rather than something that's rooted in creativity and your feelings and that's where spirit is trying to tell you don't feel like you always have to do things well especially when you're trying out new things in life and you're going to through fresh experiences don't be so hard on yourself okay this is like a huge thing for aura color white and silver you are the type of person who also just cannot stand scoring low on tests it makes you feel like you are less than and it makes you question your intelligence and the thing here is that usually the most intelligent people are the ones who would even question that all of the narcissists and the people who have confidence that just stems from sheer arrogance they would never ask themselves that question so remind yourself of this Next up, within multiple streams, I want you to know here, my gorgeous white and silver aura souls, that there are definitely some ways in which you can still create generational wealth that you didn't think of. Multiple streams shows us here that you've never meant to be a one trick pony you've always meant to be kind of a jack of all trades and someone who will have multiple streams of income throughout their life another thing that i also want you to know here is that your aura color is deeply rooted in a sense of applying some knowledge that you've learned about making money and being successful at it because every little step counts and being analytical means that you do some revision on your life and your revisions are the things that set you apart from the other aura colors and that make you more successful, especially professionally speaking, than the other aura colors. Because you are the type of person that looks at which steps brought you closer to your goals and your success and what kind of behaviors didn't quite get you there. It's just overall a season and time in your life where you have understood that of course it's great to follow your heart but also moving forward based on knowledge and experience will get you where you need to go way more effectively and with less detours and next up here within stormy we also have the element of air that's acting up the element of water so emotions and your head i want you to know here that strong air sign energy can often be almost too much for you to handle so if you are an air sign then you know what it's like to have a super super busy mind because air signs are said to be overthinkers and analysts and people who can struggle to connect their emotions to their analytical and rational thinking and kind of integrate that because you're the type of person that wants to do everything well and you don't like when these emotions just kind of interrupt the flow you know so i do see here that for you what's super important 
is to remind yourself that everything goes hand in hand. You don't have to exclude your emotions if you're going through a tough time. They can actually still help you to do well in life. Next up, we have got the common raven align your inner compass so i want you to know here that setting your goals on one thing at a time is important just as this raven has like this one pearl or a little shiny nugget in its beak the same goes for you try to not focus on too many things at once align your inner compass on one thing at a time because you have such a busy and racing mind when you align yourself with too many things and multiple streams over the course of like a week a month or a year it can be a little too overwhelming and then you spread yourself too thin remind yourself that you have an entire lifetime here in multiple streams in order to create those multiple streams in order to create multiple businesses multiple ventures multiple avenues of passive income remind yourself that the most important thing to do is to create something that works that brings you joy that is successful and stabilize it make sure it works without you and then you can move on to the next chapter once you have put the different motions in place for it to work without your constant attention try to not prematurely move on next up we have got the river otter slide into joy so we also have a nice little lgbtq plus pride flag around the river otter which shows a very progressive and open-minded kind of mindset and you know we've got some coming out of the closet for your aura color so i also want you to understand that the river otter is a very playful animal that is trying to tell you to have a little bit more fun sometimes aura color white and silver you can be super serious and therefore it is truly important that you indulge in some fun at times okay don't always take things so seriously i want to also see what kind of numbers are very important for you or a color white and silver we've got the number six which is the number of family as you're in your analytical mind and era and you know just being the kind of person who is very much rooted in facts don't forget the important fact that truly matters in life is your connection to friends and family and your surroundings and that that is something that can't be replaced and that you should spend enough time enjoying there are so many people who wish that they had what you have when it comes to your social life so don't take it for granted or neglect it next up we also received the number 19 which is a prime number i want you to know here in the number 19 that this is a great day for you to pursue any kind of new venture this is a lucky number for you that is pretty uncommon but aura color white and silver is also a very uncommon aura color it's a very rare one and i want you to delve into the magical world of the number 19 by understanding that its base vibration is the number one because if we add up one plus nine we receive ten and then we do one plus zero in order to get down to a single digit which equals one and the number one is a number of being an innovator of being a winner of being the type of person who doesn't need others to validate them in order to follow their dreams and be successful and you should practice gratitude each day for who you are and also how many times your guides and your angels have saved and protected you from suffering from illness from the scenario we spoke about like for example the car accident and practice gratitude for all of these ways in which you have been protected and in which you have been singled out to clearly be an individual that stands out but in a good way not in a way that for example challenges follow you next up we've got i am courageous and face my fears don't be afraid or a color white and silver i know you are perfectionists at heart you want to do everything well and you want to make yourself and your surrounding proud but it is also important that you remember that all of the shots that you didn't take are automatically failed shots 
don't overthink don't be in your head so much aura color white and silver and try to step into just doing so my gorgeous souls of aura color white and silver this is the reading that i've received for you and i truly hope that you found it insightful and that you enjoyed spending this divine time and space with me don't forget to leave a little pride flag emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you were here and that you are part of aura color white and silver i'm sending you love and i can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings hello all of my gorgeous aura colors orange yellow and red you have a creative and highly vibrant aura and you enjoy yourself through self-expression and anything artsy and that allows you to use your imagination so now let's get into your aura color reading i hope that you're enjoying this concept it's something new and fun that i thought why not implement on my channel because innovation is everything in this space and I want you all to learn more about yourselves while having the utmost fun so first up we've got the vulture spirit as well as the hawk spirit so two feathery companions for one we have the vulture that looks almost a little clumsy but nevertheless has a crown and then we've also got the hawk which looks majestic and highly focused now the vulture spirit shows us here that for you my beautiful aura color colors orange yellow and red nothing is wasted any idea that you have that doesn't end up actually becoming something or turning into something it doesn't mean that it was a bad idea or that it was for nothing remind yourself here that sometimes even just having silly conversations with people about ideas that you have in business or creatively can actually put you on to something life-changing something huge allow spirit to be your guide that is the message we've got in the hawk spirit connected to the vulture spirit and this means to just allow your intuition to guide you in any creative process and endeavor if you're in the middle of a project and you're thinking of trying different approaches to making the project happen and to completing it installing different softwares that can help you maybe you're thinking of using ai for certain things and just overall doing a little revamp and recreation of your personal brand and professional brand follow your spirit guides in the sense of not being afraid to do something and then changing it again after all all of our favorite art usually came by coincidence as someone was already like in the flow and the rhino spirit shows that all of you gorgeous aura colors in this group can overcome any obstacle the thing here with the rhino spirit is that you sometimes struggle to see ahead or see the future in a very clear manner which can make you anxious because especially if you would like to live off of creative endeavors or just a job that you love it can seem like a huge leap of faith to take that risk rather than just having a stable job for the rest of your life but the rhino spirit reminds you of the fact that both have their own kind of perks and downsides and sometimes what seems super safe isn't actually the safest route because the safest route is what you're the most passionate about if you've got a job that you don't like you can get fired from it if it's in an industry that you feel uninspired by and your firm closes that you were working at it may be hard for you to be flexible and find another job because the motivation just isn't there but if you start your own business and it doesn't immediately work, remind yourself nothing is wasted. Sometimes you just have to course correct. But as long as you keep the stamina and you keep the will to continue going, you will get to a place where you've overcome all obstacles. The giraffe spirit reminds you to see the big picture. As an aura color, orange, yellow, and red, you can sometimes get lost in the little things you can sometimes sweat the small stuff and seeing the big picture really creates a vibe about you of not just thinking of the next step like how you're going to pay next month's bills but actually thinking to yourself okay what i'm working on right now is this something that i find sustainable for the next year for the next five years or ten years maybe 
the work that you're doing pays okay, but it's just psychologically and spiritually super draining. So you know that eventually you need to get out of the way it is now, of how you're handling it at this point in time. So seeing the big picture and looking ahead just a little bit can already allow you to take action now for a fulfilled future. Next up, we've got confessions. Ooh, okay. So my gorgeous orange, yellow, and red aura colors, someone's gonna come clean about something and it's gonna change the entire big picture of how you see that person and it will change entirely how you view this individual. I see this in connectivity to the giraffe spirit and confessions that you had this view of this person that was pretty respectable and positive, but this confession, as much as you try to be impartial and you try to not judge, is just going to kind of wreck that for you. So think a male friend that you thought was like a respectable guy, but is actually after all cheating on his life partner, is actually in a situation where he's about to become a father, but not by the person who he's with, you know, that kind of vibe. So I know it's a very random message, but for some reason it needed to be within this reading. And I see here within love is in the air that for your aura color, actually finding love is more straightforward than for other aura colors. And love is something that's always kind of around you because you are more of a free spirit. People are intrigued by that. People want to be with somebody like you, want to have someone like you as a life partner because you are not only interesting, but you just always bring this fresh air into every room that you enter. And I want you to know that the love that you are meant to have is meant to also overcome any kind of obstacle. That's what we've got in connectivity to the rhino spirit. Don't overthink when you're with a person where the relationship is going to be in the next month or the next year. Live in the moment and know here that if it's the right person, you will see within the first couple obstacles, which every relationship tends to have after at the latest a couple months, you will see whether you fully overcome those or not. If you're dealing with somebody and trauma and obstacles and disagreements never truly get resolved, then you know there may be love in the air, but it's not your love because your love is meant to overcome any disagreement with a completely fresh, blank, accepting and loving slate on the other end. Next up, we've got goal setting for you. All right, you are being called out to set goals a little more frequently and take this more seriously. When was the last time you really wrote down the goals that you had? When was the last time you really took your goals seriously, you set them and you actually ended up reaching them and thinking, oh, I had that on my vision board. Oh, I wrote that down. Because the more frequently you write it down, the more quickly you draw it to you, the faster you get there. So remind yourself here, my beautiful aura colors, orange, yellow, and red, that setting goals is not just about intention and having idea of what your goals are, but part of the execution is actually rehearsing those goals, okay? It's actually making sure that, okay, you've got the goal, but now you're also writing it down. Now you're also making sure that your actions align with reviewing the goals and seeing, okay, now I'm this much closer to my goal and this is where I still need to go. Just kind of getting an idea of where you stand as often as possible. If you would, and we'll get into the old woman in a second, <laughs> I know. Sometimes we can get a little like all over the place in these readings, but I hope that you don't mind. These messages are just beaming through. So with goal setting, also remind yourself here of the fact that checking in with your goals means also checking in with your finances. If you're someone who is notoriously bad at keeping track of their finances, this is your wake up call. You will not have more money until you keep taking care and keeping track of what's in your account and coming into your accounts right now. It doesn't matter whether you've got $100, $1,000, $100 million. If you can't manage $1, you won't be able to manage any of those 
other amounts either. So the older woman tells you that when you think it's impossible or you kind of think you're already doing things as best as you possibly can, there is an older, really wise woman that can give you some advice that reminds you of how cocky we can sometimes be because that's definitely one thing I've noticed that as a teenager, you think you know it all and then when you hit the mark of being like, 18, 20, 21 years old, you're like, wow, I really knew nothing. And then now I'm like, am I already in my late 20s? I mean, I'm 27. And then when you hit your mid 20s, late 20s, you're like, oh my God, what was I doing in my early 20s? I really thought I was all that. And I imagine it continues going like that until, yeah, you come to this older woman stage where you look at these teens and 20 and 30 something year olds and you're like you guys are still babies you still don't even know what life is so never underestimate how inexperienced we might still be even though it doesn't always feel that way next up we've got the dagger so there are some fears and worries and tense situations that this older woman can help you to work through on route to your goals. And the thing here with the dagger is that you are afraid and worried about backstabbing. You are afraid and worried about being cut and cut in a place where you shared your deepest fears and someone is actually then using that against you. And when these situations arise, it is literally always best to not stoop to that person's level and do the same thing back. Probably not even communicate with anyone who did such a heinous act to you, but instead remind yourself that being poised, being elegant, being someone who shows that they're not going to stoop to that same level is worth so much more than a feeling of revenge. So I do want you to know that while you can take revenge, it's not in your nature. You are the type of aura color that is meant to be like expressive, fun, a little all over the place. You're not meant to be a serious fighter. So we have two cards that popped right out as I was shuffling and we have the four of wands reverse as well as the ten of cups. And you know what this means, aura color, orange, yellow, red. You're going to be traveling a lot once you're settled with a person in a relationship. So the Ten of Cups shows like a great family life, a close connection, a close relationship, love, togetherness, and the Four of Wands in reverse shows that you won't just have one home, you'll live in lots of different countries and travel to lots of different countries and exploring is going to be your MO with this person and you'll already realize pretty early on in the relationship with this individual that you fit together so nicely because where other couples are maybe arguing and fighting during travels and stressful situations you guys are thriving and always making the most of it so next we have the white-tailed deer now the white-tailed deer shows us that an important thing for you to remind yourself of is to sometimes take a step back to just assess the situation to take a pause before you act because you can be a little impulsive and when you have an idea you want to execute it now you want to do it immediately and that can definitely be a little not like toxic but it can be something that can bite you in the butt at times so the asian elephant shows honoring your lineage know here within the asian elephant that honoring your lineage is a huge thing in connectivity to the older woman that you can get from like a grandmother and an older like motherly figure in general now what we do see here with the asian elephant is the fact that there is like an older woman potentially even with roots that have a very like spiritual background that comes from the east so think buddhism think someone who likes to practice yoga and chanting things that were born in the east and this is the type of person who can help you to not only honor yourself but also your lineage your family's lineage and also give thanks and honor to your lineage in the sense of like with yoga for example 
we do sun salutations in order to, well, salute the earth, right? In order to pay thanks and gratitude to the earth. And one thing we have in common is that every single one of us, our lineage is from planet earth, or at least so we believe, right? <laughs> Unless there are any aliens amongst us, but you get what I'm trying to say. So learning teachings from an older woman, such as this one, is important on your journey to becoming the best and most vibrant version of yourself. So my beautiful aura colors, orange, yellow, and red, if you have this older woman that's like a coach almost, that's just like a sage for you, if she's already in your life, let me know below in the comment section. Let me know if it's like your grandma, if it's just a friend who is an older woman, it could be your mother, but just this kind of sacred connection. And if that's not something that you want to share because it is a public platform, feel free to leave a little goal symbol below in the comment section to let me and others know that you belong to this aura color, orange, yellow, and red, because that's the only way you would know. I thank you for being here, and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings. Hello, my beautiful pink and light blue aura color babies. How are you all doing? Are you excited to get into this reading? Because I am, and I can't wait to figure out precisely what's coming towards you in this pink and light blue lifetime. So let's see what we've got. I'm starting off with my Gentle Heart Tarot deck. This is actually a deck that I've published. I have literally had this deck since it came out and you guys it is still in perfect condition look at these rose gold edges i mean you guys know the unicorn mom makes quality products so let's get into it we've got the ace of diamonds as well as the chariot what i see for my gorgeous blue and pink aura colors is that you have a very social and nurturing aura and what this does is it creates a lot of business opportunities for you in life so while other aura colors may be invited to one thing here and there or maybe kind of up for promotion every now and then for you this happens rather frequently because being in a connection or any sort of relationship with you is super comforting to other people because you listen you're empathetic and you're compassionate and the chariot shows me here that you're not going to just be the shoulder for everyone to lean on no 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 you've also got your own goals your own aspirations and places you're going and therefore you are definitely going to use all of the great connections that you've made in order to push yourself and your career forward the chariot also shows great determination and that you're most likely going to slowly find a routine where you do the same thing every day that makes you strong and that makes you inspiring. So like a morning routine that you know just sets you up for success each day. So what you'll do is maybe get up and meditate, have some healthy breakfast. Some of you may even work out or read, but just overall, the more you mature, the easier it gets for you to get up early and get straight to setting yourself up for success. Next up, we have the Ten of Swords. Now, don't feel panicked by the Ten of Swords. I know it is a dramatic card, but what it actually shows us here is the suit of swords corresponds to the element of air and all things mental is that you simply cannot be bothered with people's petty behaviors or bs anymore the ten of swords shows that you are the kind of person who just puts things to rest when they need to be put to rest you do not gossip you are not the kind of aura color that likes to be too much in anyone's business of course you will listen if someone has you know a little information to share but you are not about the jealousy you are not about high maintenance friendships i see that that is something you feel just holds you back you're very nurturing you're great at building connections and relationships but you're not going to keep any connections and relationships that make you feel like they're encroaching on you that make you feel like suffocated that is not the vibe for you. The Queen of Crystals shows you're very autonomous. 
you like to have your own freedom over your schedule, your calendar, and just overall, you are the type of person that likes their independence. We also have a symbol of the cat here, which as you guys know, they are notoriously known for their independence and for having their own minds, if you will. So if you're a cat mom or a cat dad, definitely let us know your fur baby's name and personality below in the comment section. I'd love to read all about it or leave a cat emoji below if you are not a cat owner. But just overall, you're very connected to the independent aspect of cats. Even if you don't own or live with one, even if cats are animals that you think are beautiful, but you're not ready for that kind of pet, just the aspect of the independence of the knowing your worth that's what i see here within the queen of crystals next up we've got the dulcis so i do want you to know one thing with aura color pink and light blue is that moving on can be hard you are such a loving like relationship kind of person even when things go sour, it's almost like you're trapped in a little golden cage like this bird right here. And once things are good, like you can get a little comfortable, that's fine. I think we all tend to do that once we are in a comfortable, safe relationship. But you also got to remind yourself, we do have a snake here right around the tree branch okay that is making its way over to our little birdie bird we do have to also remind ourselves to be careful because sometimes with complacency that can breed some sort of resentment it can also breed some situations that just arise out of boredom you know when relationships don't really have like serious fights and you're just like why are we even arguing like we love each other this is so dumb it's not even that serious that's one first world problem that i see here for you next up we've got continuum so for your aura color i want you to know that creating traditions and like a value system with your own children and family around you is super important like not being the kind of person that just says well whatever everyone should do their own thing you like to make sure that you're passing down a mindset like a mindset of kindness of generosity a mindset of acceptance you would never want to teach your kids for example to bully other children and here within the four of cups i do want it to just be clear to you that a huge part of how you feel emotionally always depends on your cycles every single month i see that that makes a huge impact on how you feel what you're going through emotionally speaking and it can also affect how you react to other people so don't be so hard on yourself and sometimes also just take a little moment away from others when you know you're feeling exceptionally vulnerable or exceptionally easily agitated too here within the fighter you definitely have some feistiness to you and it's about using that at appropriate times and not just being like feisty all the time all over the place and unnecessarily because i think some of us go through a, a little bit argumentative phase when we are like in our late teens we think we know it all we think we're all that and that is where i can definitely see the older you get the more you steer away from any confrontation or fights because you also understand that if someone is misunderstanding you or is choosing to argue with you that is their choice they want that to a certain degree and that not engaging is often the best solution for you and overall like saving your energy for battles that matter like fighting for things like your rights legal battles making sure that when it comes to being respected and honored by other people that that is where you set your boundaries but not with unnecessary petties who already know that they just want to be annoying and disrespectful like before we get into the beluga whale that we received here i just want to give you an example like if you are at a store or at a gas station and someone is trying to like cut the line to pay 
ahead of you or just making a snarky comment towards you rather than like going up and confronting them or saying anything back to them you just know like they must have bigger issues that this is what they need to do that this is so important to them and that they kind of get some weird satisfaction out of this type of behavior and instead of taking offense to it actually in the beluga whale it feeds your curiosity it's like learning about psychology and human behavior is a huge part of your lifestyle so my aura colors pink and light blue you are like little armchair psychologists and because you know so many different types of people and you've come in contact with so many different types of personality styles you actually become experts by the end of your lives when it comes to immediately being able to read what kind of person you're dealing with before they've even said too much just from their expression from their gestures and from the few words that they do pick now the common octopus shows us here that your mind is to your most significant advantage you are above average when it comes to intellectual understanding in comparison to some of these other aura colors the common octopus is also representative of you solving absolutely any problem with the strength of your laser sharp mind and not underestimating that not underestimating just how powerful that your mind truly is and how it can come up with any solution whenever needed and not to freak out once you're going through something or when you receive like some really big news or something annoying like if there's a letter in the mail with something annoying you need to tend to that would immediately make you anxious it could be a bill it could be a tax thing it could be a lawsuit just knowing you can solve anything you just need to kind of stay calm and feed your curiosity reverse the roles put yourself in the position of the perpetrator of the things that make you uneasy uncomfortable or annoy you like what are they trying to accomplish right and then once you know where they or sometimes the enemy is trying to take you then you can work back from that and ensure that you're not kind of falling into their trap if that makes sense but another thing here in our spiny seahorse is a message of reversed roles being completely fine accepted and even kind of put to a new test in your life because you live your own traditions, values, and norms. You don't wanna copy the ones that you had from your parents. You want to be more authentic and follow your own traditions and norms in a way that suits you and pass down mostly openness it's not that you need your descendants or your kids to practice the exact same traditions exactly how you did but just for them to be open enough to learn new traditions to instill their own and if they like to continue what you taught them now the tiger shark shows us here that your ancestors are watching at all times you are divinely connected to those who came before you to your ancestors and i want you to make them proud my gorgeous aura colors pink and light blue you have such a like socially nurturing aura of someone that people just like to be around people talk like good behind your back people say the nicest things when you're not looking and not listening and the thing here is that you are the type of aura color that makes for a great leader you would be awesome politicians but often you are the ones who don't even want to be politicians because you just find it a little bit pretentious you find it to be like a little fake you don't like to ask kiss so to say and just overall that is i think also a big issue when it comes to these jobs or these spots is that the people who really want it and get to the top are often the wrong people because they're motivated by ego and by being power hungry but actually what we really need is aura colors pink and light blue in leadership positions and the position to make rules and regulations because 
you want to take into account those within our community that maybe can't stand up for themselves or that maybe need that additional protection because you know someone like that. You know someone who is an able-bodied. You know someone who is dealing with mental challenges or other physical challenges, for example. And because you have a connection, it is meaningful to you. Meanwhile, other people, they just see it as a number or a tail on a piece of paper, a story, and they don't really have that intimate emotional connection, meaning it's hard for them to really act thinking of everyone from marginalized groups as well as just other parts of society that often get overlooked and don't get enough support. Now, my gorgeous aura colors, pink and light blue, we are at the end of this aura color reading and I hope you've enjoyed it and that you found it insightful. Feel free to let me know below in the comment section by leaving a whale emoji below. You can also let me know that this is your aura color because that's the only way that anyone would know. And of course, we had the cat emoji too if you feel like leaving that in the comment section. So my gorgeous pink and light blue aura colors, I love you all so much. Thanks for tuning in, and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings. Hello, my beautiful aura colors, green and brown. Welcome to your reading. You have a earthy and grounding aura. You're deeply connected to nature and the environment, or at least that's what one says about your aura color. But let's get more deeply into what your aura color is all about during this season of your life so let's see what's going on for you i'll get straight into it with my tarot cards lean back relax and enjoy just as a little disclaimer i may get very specific and if any of these messages are not for you simply let them be leave them where they are and take what serves you. And sometimes you guys know these messages do come back. They may not always make sense right now, but at the particular moment that you need to remind yourself of your aura color reading, it will pop back into your head. Oh, right, Vanessa said this during my aura color reading. Didn't make sense at the time, but now it does. So first up, we've got the five of cups. I want you to know here that it is completely normal with your aura color to actually vibe less with most people. And what I mean by that is like you may know a lot of people, you may have a lot of acquaintances, but most people are just not for you. You like to have a small select inner circle, a group of people that you can really rely on. And while you're friendly with a lot of other people, you are very selective because you know that they don't always fill up your cup. They drop the ball. Sometimes they ensure that the water flows out of your cup or that you're the only one filling theirs and it's insatiable because they keep dropping their own ball. So you like to stay up here. When they go low, you go high. That's the saying, you don't like jealousy. And here with these two golden cups and just very few fish around, you like to keep those who are really positive and bring light into your life where you fill each other's cups equally. Those are the ones you like to keep around and that is overall like the story of your life and you've most likely even been betrayed a lot in the past to the point where you've just learned it's not even worth putting in too much effort into a relationship you can already see will end up being super one-sided. Next up, we've got this crescendo. So here I can see that things are taking on a lot of extra pace in your life and with crescendo it's also important that while you for example have more to celebrate about don't then also consume more unhealthy foods as like celebration you know like constantly telling yourself okay well i did this really well or i got my promotion i'm gonna go out drink something that is like unhealthy eat a lot of fried unhealthy foods like try to not amp up the pace with unhealthy rewards while you are celebrating the good stuff because that kind of like almost cancels each other out, doesn't it? It's almost like a little counterintuitive. Oh, okay, we've got a couple more cards that popped out of the pile that we'll look into. I'll just put our deck over here and we'll go card by card. 
So here, the first one that we've got is the Eight of Coins or Eight of Pentacles. So building is your thing and also gardening is something you are good at. I just want you to know here that you are meant to be a builder in this lifetime. That means building businesses, legacies, even homes, like turning houses into homes and overall getting into real estate as well. I want you to know here with the Eight of Coins, what we've also got is just this entire vibe of being insatiable when it comes to information. Like you never feel like you know everything. You always feel like there's a better way to cook. There's a better way to organize yourself, to clean, and also to be productive. There's a better way to learn for you as a person. So you're always looking for ways to improve. And here in the Five of Swords, I do see that sometimes that can be a little detrimental to your mental health because it's like, it's almost like you've never arrived. Like you never give yourself this feeling like, okay, I'm satisfied now. And this is definitely something to learn to sometimes just relish in and to remind yourself if you're doing more things on an environmental scale, like you're planting trees or trying to grow your own vegetables, or at least that would be a goal of yours to lead a more sustainable life. Like don't villainize yourself for the things you're not doing perfectly right now or the consumption that you have right now, okay? We are all doing our best to make better choices and the fact that you're even already thinking of others and the environment and making better choices that's something to already be proud of it's something that already shows you're ahead of the game and the last card is actually the knight of cups and the knight of cups shows us that you have very strong opinions about the environment about for example rights human rights child labor things such as animal rights like even going as far as to going to certain protests and being in certain groups like facebook groups for example following these pages like PETA and things like that and just seeing what's going on in that part of the world not just because you're interested but also because you would eventually like to do a lot more pro bono and philanthropic kind of work that helps to preserve our planet in its state that it's in or the environment at least for as long as possible of course there will be some sort of detriment there may be some setbacks but you definitely are not the kind of person that just feels like everything is doomed you feel like there is still a lot of saving that we can do and the orange dotted tusk fish just shows you're the type of person that thinks outside of the box like the thing is you have never reached a point where you're done with great ideas it's like one day you'll wake up and you'll come up with this idea on how you can improve your community like for example creating a women's circle or a book club some sort of like yoga or painting event where you can connect with people connect with the youth like offering things for people who can't afford to do some certain activities right looking for ways how you can get involved and you also think outside of the box professionally which is why you are a super valuable person to any business so the thing with you is that you're often very humble but aura color green and brown ask for more promotions that's what i'm getting here you work hard like the devil works hard but aura color green and brown works harder you know what i mean and you think outside of the box you treat work and business and customers like they are your own and this is definitely something that i just want to remind you like it is valuable it should be rewarded and the orfish shows like you are great at letting your kindness be your strength like aura color green and brown as a kid or as a teenager growing up you may have been very reactive even combative like talking back and maybe argumentative but the older you get you mature super quickly to the point where you are just the bigger person because you are calm you are just like a rock that anyone can say any bs to and you just see it as a reflection of that person especially if they don't know anything about you 
you don't feel the need to justify you don't feel the need to defend yourself whatsoever and the flying gurner just shows us that you have been in situations where yeah emotions were running high and you said and did things that got you in trouble and that you regretted or you just felt you shouldn't have even put yourself out there like that and in this day and age you ask yourself if it's worth it first you don't just let your emotions take over and control you and it's not even like emotions taking over and controlling you right if someone triggers you actually you're giving them the full power over you by just basically saying okay you triggered me now i will let my feelings and the trauma that i still have go wild and go off on you because i haven't healed and haven't learned to keep that part of myself under control so basically anybody can trigger me at any time and you've just totally learned from that you have learned that in order to go for the things you want in life in order to actually be effective you need to just like strike when the iron is hot you can't be in your feels you can't be wondering why someone said a certain thing or be like mulling over whether you want to say something back no you are ready you stay ready so you don't need to get ready that is literally the whole vibe of aura color green and brown and yet you are still the most laid back wrinkle free aura color let's see what affirmation you're receiving i am a strong person that is the exact way that i would actually describe your aura color being very strong being solid having a strong foundation and then we have i am open to new friendships so as an aura color green and brown you are definitely the type of person who is deeply connected not only to earth and nature but also like making new friendships and deepening those is pretty easy for you you're pretty trusting you have a good instinct when it comes to reading people and overall like you've had one or two bad experiences but nothing like what some of your friends and family have told you so you've been pretty protected when it comes to friendships relationships if you think of things as like divorce and betrayal and stuff um, your situations have been of course also challenging but they could have been way worse if you didn't have the strength within you my gorgeous aura color is green and brown leave a tree emoji below if you made it to the end of your reading i would like to thank you so much for being here and for spending this divine time and space with me i appreciate you more than you know and i hope that i hope that you enjoyed this fun and innovative approach to a video feel free to give me feedback in the comment section. I love to hear from you guys and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings. Hello all of my gorgeous violet and indigo aura colors. Welcome to your aura color reading. We'll get straight into it and I just want to right off the bat remind you that I will get into some great detail in these readings. Take whatever messages resonate for you and whatever doesn't resonate just let it be okay don't sweat it don't overthink it we are here to vibe we're here to see what the galaxy has to provide for you my beautiful violet and indigo aura colors and overall you are a very spiritual and intuitive aura and you often anyway seek some higher wisdom and guidance so these tarot and oracle readings are right up your alley First up, we've got build strength and then massage. So working out needs to be followed by self-care, massages, and maybe even something like physiotherapy or massages that are specifically in line with massaging your muscles in a kind of medical way, not just as a spa treatment. I also want you to know here, that it's time for you to build up some more physical strength. If you've had broken bones and suffered from like tension, a sore back, back ache, for example, we've also got some tension in your foot here, your neck, your back, your lower back, especially, as well as in your hands, you know, just a little bit of like, sometimes difficulty even like typing and being on the computer too much a great antidote for that is to make sure that you are actually working out building muscle and flexibility building strength means also making sure that in old age 
you will age in a way that you have less ailments, less pains, that all of these things are just not really on the same level of disintegration as if you would have never moved your body. For example, boxing is a great way to build strength, but you can also run, you can jump rope, you can go on walks. Any kind of movement is better than none. And furthermore, chanting is a huge part of what you will do at one point in your life like every morning there will be a song that you will sing or chant i also am getting these vibes like family vibes you know if you have kids like singing and chanting a song to them that just kind of sticks in the family and you're always tuning your voice every single day to just a couple beats a couple chants in your car singing along you know and i want you to know here that your holistic approach to life is really the thing that sets you apart from the other aura colors because you realize, okay, if you start your day by building strength, for example, stretching or chanting, you're already ahead of the game when it comes to being strong mentally. Like you're already in a space where it's very clear you're no pushover. You're not the kind of person that is also just gonna take no for an answer. If you want something and someone says no, you know that you're just asking the wrong person and you're off to the next. You will keep pitching. Here within the psychedelic frogfish, you are becoming very conscious of the way that you're filtering because the thing here with conscious filtering is that it takes a lot, a lot of time for you to realize, okay, these things have been affecting me positively or negatively, but once you kind of get the hang of how everything intertwines and connects, you are very consciously filtering what you're consuming. You're always asking yourself, okay, does it make sense to follow this page? How does it make me feel? Does it make sense to watch this show? Is it actually providing me with anything of a even close to feel good hormone? And you also understand in the leafy sea dragon that everything serves a purpose. Maybe at an earlier point in your life, you used to watch a lot of trashy TV, for example, but then moving forward, you realize that's just not really who you are. That's not the type of vibe or energy you would like to have around yourself. And it's just overall about eliminating, growing, and maturing with you. Leafy Sea Dragon also is reminding you that everything serves a purpose on your body give thanks to it. Even things that you see as imperfections, such as your skin acting up or having a stomach ache, your skin is just making you aware of the fact that you are probably consuming something or living in a way that isn't healthy for you. Having a stomach ache, for example, I remember the other day I ate something that just didn't agree with my stomach and I could feel it, I could sense it, and we should give thanks to our bodies for all of these little signs and signals because then we can really attune ourselves to what our individual bodies need. And mainstream media always has these like food pyramids and is trying to tell us what the latest diet fad is, but you really need to remind yourself that your body serves its purpose of alerting you about what is good, what's working, and what doesn't. And here within the Knight of Cups, you're the type of person that takes all of these signs seriously. You're maybe even a little hypochondriac, honestly. Not to call you out, but it is also definitely a quality that people like in you because when they come to you with like a little ailment, you're immediately getting out like your band-aids, your bandages, all the teas that you have, all the herbal remedies. You're immediately there to heal, to be a kind of like support to others so you are well liked when people are going through something physically especially now the ten of cups shows us that for aura color violet and indigo a fulfilling family life is top priority and once you've got that you've really kind of made it in life you're really at a place where 
nobody can take that from you and you're very much in a place of fulfillment with life in general it's family over everything for you you don't play with that it's not something you take lightly and furthermore also being super protective about what your family is consuming yes you will be that helicopter parent that makes sure that things are organic that ensures that their kids are in a state of not consuming media that is violent, for example, or that is way ahead of their age because you didn't have that. So you know what it's like to start consuming things at a way too early age and how maybe there should have been a little bit more parental guidance and control. And the 10 of pentacles shows us here that you, sorry, the king of pentacles um, shows us here that overall you are just like the ruler of your household okay so once you have your own family unit you are the boss people answer to you people listen to you it's like you have your own little kingdom honestly and you are just overall like the go-to person which it can be tiring but being in charge of the time plan the vacations the finances i see that that just gives you a lot of inner peace as well and yeah legacy you want to build a legacy you want to build an empire you want to hand down generational wealth and emotional intelligence not generational trauma and debts and that is definitely something i can see here within legacy for you you are working hard in order to make sure that you make your ancestors proud like you see what your parents went through in order to get to where they are and you think to yourself my goodness i've got so many opportunities i'd be damned if i just sit back and let these pass by and don't make the best of it and don't level up my lineage again and put my karma in a place where you know my kids are going to have better karma than i have even so i definitely want you to know that this is a goal of yours and the five of crystals shows us that it's almost like you're in a time crunch so a little piece of advice for you violet and indigo is to th take things slow okay deepen into your meditation practice if you've got one if you don't have a meditation practice yet it is really about time that you meditate just a little bit every day i promise you it is life-changing um, I started waking up super early and that's when I meditate because whoever gets up super early at like five or something and then just does nothing. I mean, it's the perfect time for you to do all of these little tasks that leave you feeling ready for the day and already proud of yourself, already like, all right, I've got this. You know what I'm saying? So let's move further into your reading. We've got the page of diamonds next. So in the page of diamonds, know that you are going to build something from the ground up that makes money and it is going to buy you diamonds, quite literally speaking. So it's going to go well and it's like your little baby and you're going to do this at a time in your life where you feel like, all right, you know, I've built my strength. I've built my self-confidence. Now it's time for me to use all of this like self-care and actually put it into something that builds legacy like we spoke about here in the legacy card and you'll be so proud of it you'll be so ready to like hand it down to your kids and make sure that it creates something that reminds your descendants one day of like who you were and what kind of huge difference that you made in your family's history and within your lineage so my gorgeous violet and indigo aura colors i hope that you've enjoyed your reading and that you found it insightful and that you like this kind of reading that it was fun for you leave a little rainbow emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you were here to receive your reading also one thing i'm just seeing is we've got these little lotus symbols if you see this in the next couple days this lotus symbol and it's not a super common symbol you know your aura color is for sure violet and indigo and these were for sure messages that you had to receive all right so pay attention to that 
Now, as already mentioned, this is the reading that I've received for you and I hope you've enjoyed it and that you found it insightful and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming predictions.